morning, evening and night time ladies and gents depending on your time zone. Today's video is going to be about Lighthouse. I'm really excited to see Lightkeeper being introduced to Lighthouse, but today's video is not about that. Today's video is about farming rogues. Farming rogues at night time. Why night time you might ask? Few reasons. First of all, BSG changed the behavior of the rogues and they seem much worse at night time. Secondly, there are less players on Lighthouse during night as mostly people prefer to play during daytime as they can see better. And thirdly, whenever people go to nighttime, they tend to focus on quests. Not that many people will go for rogues, as they would prefer going to different houses, doing their quests, checking lighthouse, etc. Let's talk about the lighthouse map for a moment. First of all, you might spawn at the bottom of the map or the top of the map. If I spawn at the bottom, typically I would go to, ro to loot the rich houses and then extract. Either using southern road, if I don't have power cord, or if I do power cord, I can extract right there, in between the houses. Um, however, if the raid seems really quiet, I might go for the rogues as well, but in that case the raid is gonna take me quite a bit of time. If I spawn on the top side of the map, I typically go all the way to the right, since I'm a bear and I can't really approach the bridge, because the rogues will see me and kill me. I go to the right side, push the rogues. From here, I snipe the one uh, rogue which is located at the edge, on the corner of this house. I push the house, go to the roof, kill the rest of them, loot them, and either extract using the northern checkpoint if it's open, uber if I have money, or if I don't, I go to the uh, shoreline extraction. However, if the raid seems uh, quiet and I have some extra space, I would go and loot this house, since it has a couple of really really good spawns. After that, I will leave using the same extractions, either Northern, Uber or Shoreline. Now, let me quickly take you through my route during daytime to show how it looks like, and then I'll show it how it actually looks in practice during nighttime. First of all, I would approach the fence to snipe the rock which is located at the corner. First of all, it's very easy to see him. Secondly, if you shoot him from this position, the rest of the rogues are not gonna get alarmed and whenever you go to the roof of the building, they're still gonna see their guns instead of walking around. Approaching the roof, I would still take precautions to scan around and see if any of the rogues are wandering around. If there is none and it's safe to go, I would go to the right side to get the gun from the first rogue I killed. Then, we slowly approach the rest of the rogues located on the other half of the roof kill them, load them, and go downstairs to the second building to get some fat loose from the ground. Check the box for stims, jewelry and electronics. Room and floor for tools and tetrises. And this place downstairs can spawn many really expensive items, including AESA, radio and bitcoins. Also, don't forget to check the last two boxes which are located outside the building for the same stuffs. Electronics, jewelry and stems. Let's talk about the weapon of our choice. It's gonna be Mosin. First of all, it's very cheap. Secondly, you can buy very good bullets on level 1 proper, which will be able to one tap rogues in the head even through their helmets. And thirdly, if you do find a couple of good guns, you wouldn't feel bad checking away a Mosin. Like, come on, it's a Mosin. Who cares? Right now is a wonderful moment for you to give this video a thumbs up if you've been enjoying it so far. If you give it a thumbs up, it's gonna increase your most inaccuracy by 100%. And if you time a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm, it's gonna give rogues a debuff. It will make them short-sighted. As I mentioned earlier, we approach this fence and snap the rogue located at the corner of the building. Twitch Prime, nice! So yeah, feel free to check me out on Twitch where I stream daily. If you have any questions, I'll definitely answer them. Or just come in to chill around and say hi. That guy is still there. And this place is empty. It seems like the rogue in that building sent me and he tried to shoot me with a minigun. However, I was out of his reach, but he kept trying. So I shot him a couple of times, couldn't hit him and I was like, whatever. Since he can't hit me anyway, I'll just loot and leave. Bro, 
all these cap guys. This time, I had another extraction, so the raid ended pretty fast. Next raid, I spawned right next to the shore, so the run was pretty long and I wasn't sure if I'm going to be the first one to kill the rogues, but I decided to go for it anyway. Oh, I killed the rogue and Nikita turned the lights off, look at that. <laughs> Ooh, Hexgrit, look at that. After looting the first rogue, I started looking for the rest of them, but I couldn't seem to see any. You seeing those Nikes? Well, more, more like Timberlands. I'm approaching rogues really carefully, because one small mistake is going to cost me my life. It is! Hello? Hello? No way, man. Oh, you're a Yusuke. I'm a Yusuke as well. You questing or something? Hello? You wanna be friends? Make him bleed? Don't forget why we're here. We're here to farm. Every single type of PvP we can get, we should avoid it. I'm playing, I'm playing as a bear. I lied to him. If you are farming, please do try to avoid as much PvP as possible, as the goal is to make as much money as you can. After I extracted, I managed to sell all of the items and get some money. I think overall within uh, one and a half, two hours, I made something around two, maybe two and a half million. So this way is very viable. And we're approaching the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this guide and I'll see you in the next one.